talking about the punch volley today. Uh, so keep in mind that on the punch volley, um, your lower extremities, uh, think about keeping them nice and quiet. Think about keeping your upper extremities nice and quiet. If you had a beverage in your non-dominant hand, or if you had a bowl on top of your head, think about keeping that stable. So everything's nice and stable. Uh, less going on, less that can go wrong. Um, but uh, taking a look at the mechanics with your arm. So focus on uh, understanding what your grip is. If you're in full Western, uh, zones one all the way to zone four are all gonna be taken with a forehand. If you're in full semi-Western, I call this a pancake grip, but from nine o'clock all the way to three o'clock, this can all be taken with a forehand. Continental is your hand straight grip. Eastern is when you slide it over one little notch to your dominant side. Uh, if you were in those grips from zone one all the way to zone three, Okay, zone one, two, three, and four. From zone three all the way to zone one, uh, this is all gonna be taken with a backhand. Uh, you will notice that you can cover a lot more space uh, if the grip is in continental or if it's in eastern. Um, you can cover a lot more space with your backhand if you're in that grip. Um, something I want you guys to focus on is um, that the paddle's connected to your shoulder. It doesn't disconnect here. Anytime that I hit a punch volley, I would say that I'm squeezing pretty hard. I am meeting the second imaginary ball. I'm not meeting the first imaginary ball. Second imaginary ball is out here, and I'm making sure that uh, you know if, if point A and point B were right here, point A is there, point B is here, I'm staying in point A and point B. I'm making sure not to cock. I'm making sure not to add in any of these variables. Main focus is just laying it over, making sure that the paddle face uh, is uh, facing at my target or that my knuckles are leading um, and that I'm, I'm making clean contact and I'm staying uh, in this little small window and I'm keeping spacing from my body. Uh, but keep in mind that anytime you hit a backhand volley, lead with the knuckles. Anytime you hit a forehand volley, lead with the palm. Um, so we talked about the backhand volley, talked about leading with the knuckles. Uh, we have not talked about anytime that you roll over um, or, or, you know, let's say you're, let's say like your ready position is, you know, anywhere from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock. It's right in there. Why? Because obviously you can cover a lot more space there. Um, but as it's in here, as I roll over for a backhand, uh, my paddle face is kind of naturally open. So I've got to focus on when I'm in this grip, as I make contact with my volley, I've got to roll my knuckles a little bit. That way I can be stronger and I can get the ball going down. You will, you will notice, or if you haven't noticed already, um, but when backhand volleys get popped up, generally it's because the knuckles don't get situated down. Okay, so you've got to focus on getting the knuckles situated down. Forehand side. Uh, paddle face doesn't lie, uh, palm in the hand doesn't lie, and the hand positioning doesn't lie, okay? So um, I'm gonna really focus on keeping this nice and tight. Uh, there's some wrinkles in the back of my wrist. You should have some wrinkles there. As you're uh, lining up for that forehand volley, think about keeping your arm like a V. V, v stands for volley here. Uh, my elbow's nice and lodged in. There was a ball in my armpit. I could keep that ball in there. Um, but main focus is, is keeping it inside of my peripheral vision, not letting it get outside of peripheral or not letting that ball fall out. Um, you can also consider this idea. If this was your book, it's like you're opening up one little page of the book as you volley. I would say the main tendencies on the punt volleys are overdoing it, uh, over swinging, uh, using too much wrist as you make in contact, swatting flies, uh, making contact too close to your body or making contact when you're too extended. Um, so let's, let's really focus on um, if you want to have some of the best hands in the world or if you want to fine tune your hands, uh, think about keeping your lower and upper extremities nice and, uh, nice and organized or nice and still. And then think about uh, keeping that spacing from your body on both your forehand and your backhand. And you should try to consider that if you're in continental or you're in eastern, taking a good majority of your volleys with your back end. Hey guys, uh, drill we're gonna do here is it's gonna be figure eight punch volleys. Um, I'm gonna be going cross court, Coach Jim here is gonna be going down the line and then we're gonna change roles. We will go for about three or four minutes and then change roles, okay? So main focus is good technique, keeping things out in front of us, um, uh, keeping it inside of peripheral vision, but just making sure that, that the direction of the drill is going the appropriate way. I'm going cross court, so my forehand volley would go to Jim's forehand volley. My backhand volley would go to Jim's backhand volley. Okay, ready here, just like this. Okay, I'm going cross court, Jim's going down the line. Nice, good. 
treating our paddle like it's a book. That's okay. Good. 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 Jim and I can do this all day long, baby. Nice. Good. Trying to uh, keep that spacing from our body, making sure that we don't cock. Perfect, okay, and then we'll change direction here, change direction, same idea. Ready here, I'm going down the line, Jim's going cross. So in, in order for us to get the ball moving where we want, uh, the paddle face doesn't lie, the hand positioning doesn't lie, palm of the hand or knuckle. So think about um, leading with the palm on the forehand, leading with the knuckles on the backhand side, or understanding that your paddle face does not lie. Get your paddle face facing where you want it to go. Ready here? Okay, down the line. All right, very good, very good. Okay guys, next drill here. Um, Coach Jim is just gonna be hitting regular volley, so he doesn't have to, uh, he doesn't have to position on one side or the other. Uh, this drill is gonna be difficult for me though. My job is, is um, I have to make contact off to the side of my body. So I'm, I'm making contact in two different zones here. I'm making contact in zone one, and I'm making contact in zone four. So my job is to not make contact in zone two or zone three and surrender with the backhand. Um, I'm gonna uh, use my feet uh, a bit more wiser and get my feet out of the way and create some space so I can hit a much bigger volley. Um, I like this drill because it, it, it works on my timing, it works on my shifting, uh, and it forces me to, uh, um, you know, it, forces me that as I'm adding more variables into sliding and, and, and into gaining space that I can't take the paddle back too far. I would say that's like one of the main tendencies when you get moving too much when you volley is that with added movement comes added swing. I want us to, to uh, try to get ourselves out of the way and create space but keep the hand positioning and keep the swing short and sweet. Okay, ready here? Okay, so I'm gonna be alternating both forehand and backhand. Jim is just gonna be volleying at my chest. His main spot is gonna be putting a bullseye on my camp's shirt here. And, and everybody should go to my website. I'm just kidding, okay. Ready here? Okay. Okay, as you can see, this is, this is a movement drill, and if you were acting as a student, you definitely should get tired here. Look how uh, I'm making contact out in front, and look how I'm getting spacing, and I'm not getting jammed in here, okay? There, nice, 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 nice. That's okay. Again, 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 go. Again. That's tough. I need, I need to slow mine down, sorry. That's all right. I should do that. Only get the good ones, Kev. <laughs> We're gonna play points out both ways cross court. And let's just focus on recognizing when we should speed up when you see your opponent casting. I think this is a game that, that, uh, that is tied to recognizing or seeing when your opponent's off balance or recognizing uh, when you see that your opponent is scrambling or, or they're casting and then you're looking to speed up whether it's out of the air or off the bounce. Um, in other words, you're, you're looking to capitalize when you're in control of the Dinkin Exchange. A little, little cherry on top, if you can make the ATP around the post, you get two points. Look. 
get a little two point takedown. <laughs> So really good idea, guys, something to work on as we're doing this, uh, this game. Um, what I like to focus on is I'm aiming for feet. So I'm going to try to put two or three balls uh, in a row to maybe Tyson's outside foot, and then every now and then change it back up and go back to his inside foot. That way I can take him out of his rhythm, practice moving the ball around, but I'm not complicating my own pattern so much to where I'm going to start missing way too many dinks because I've got too much going on. So practice three to the outside foot, one to the inside foot, or two to the outside foot, one to the inside foot. Uh, that way we're, we're, we're moving our opponents around a little bit and working on that skill too. Yeah, a little added variety with the patterns is good, showing your opponent different looks, you know, aiming towards that inside foot, forcing them to feel uncomfortable. Um, and, and I think too, just like what Kyle said, just not being complex with your patterns, right? There's already so much stuff going on on here. Let's focus on simplifying um, and, and, and not so much changing direction, but more so just changing feet. Keep it going cross, but just alternate feet. Um, here we go. Uh, you're not going to win anymore. <laughs> I've called you out now. Uh, now the real time. Starting, <laughs> starting now. Starting now. Oh, okay. okay. Didn't recover. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Play it out. Uh, one zero. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna take that. Uh, Once. Oh. Oh. Oh, yeah. oh, that'll work. Thank you. That'll thank, work. You, thank, you, thank you. Thank you. So, Kyle, tell me, when you get pulled out wide, I guess, uh, are you trying to place that dink back in the middle? Are you? Yeah, so I think what I'm looking for is how much time I have and if I'm balanced. If I feel like my feet are set and I've got some time and can get my hips in the right location, I'm normally going to be going to your outside foot. If you pull me out wide, it's very challenging for me to go across my body right. with a solid dink. So as I'm more off balance, feeling my body weight go this way, I'm usually surrendering and deciding to do more of a lift dink that's going to go more up the middle, hopefully giving myself time to recover. On the last point, part of the reason Tyson was able to win the point is my lift dink got popped up a little bit too high. If it would have had time to bounce, I would have been able to get a step further over and be able to take away that attack for him. But because I popped it up a little too high, uh, he took advantage of that. So um, it is your job to clean up the mess in the middle when you've been pulled that wide and you've popped it up middle, correct? For sure. I mean, so, if I'm you in that situation right. and you see me sliding and getting extended out here, you want to be licking your chops and expecting um, that there's a very high likelihood that I might give it a little bit too much. So if there's ever a time to really be on that line, looking to use your lean and make that target as small as possible for your opponents, is if you see them scrambling, you know you're in control and we want to make them have a nice small target. I like it. I like it. Let's go. Let's go here, over here. Okay, same thing here. Here we go. Play it out. I got it. Here we go. Pretty good. <laughs> Pretty good. Ah, yeah, too good, too good. So, Inside foot, right? I changed the yeah. pattern just a little bit. Great example there too, right? Kyle gave me bait. Uh, shame on me. Clonk, <laughs> clonk, clonk for taking the bait. Kyle purposely dinked in the middle, was forcing myself to kind of th think about it and, and think about pulling the trigger. I, I did. Kyle obviously covered middle. So great example of you can leave bait in the middle, but if you leave bait in the middle, it's your job to clean up your mess. Right. And I, you know, I didn't know that Tyson was going to go for an attack there. Again, like I talked about earlier, I was just trying to take him out of the rhythm of going to that same outside foot every time. So sometimes just a slightly different look will pay dividends if you're able to execute the shot.